click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will discuss about intra-query parallelism that is in single query how can we run in parallelism. We will know about the concept, the protocol that it follows by the intra-query parallelism and also what are the parts by which we can follow this intra-query parallelism. we have discussed that how can we run different queries in different transactions or different parallelisms in processors. Now we know that this cannot improve the response times because in isolation also each query is having performed on its own and no query can intervene each other. The, the time we can reduce is this throughput time that we can introduce in this part of this problem. Now we are more concerned with this part that a single query which is distributed over multiple processors in a system. That means now say in a large query or in a small query we are dividing up the task into different processors so that run in parallel. Now this will definitely improve the throughput or an average response time of a query. Now this cannot also improve this inter-query operations because now we are having that each query is operating sequentially, not in parallel. So now we can have that one query followed by another query, but each query is divided into tasks and all the tasks are running in parallel. So this is all about this intra-query parallelism. Now when we concept on this intra-query parallelism, when we are having the database management system that is in a centralized system and now there are two or more processors that is attached to it. As we know in a centralized system there is much more overhead of keeping the database, all the initiated transaction and the completed transaction in the same system. Now if we can divide the disk partitioning in such a way that it belongs to different processes, now a queries part can belong to this different disk on which the query is being processed and all the parts can be run parallelly. Now as in final we can have the result either by one result that is computed to another or the result that we can have from all these parts of the query. Now to illustrate the parallel operation of a particular query, let us consider to, to short a relation. So how can we short a relation? Say sorting a relation is a single query. So now if we can divide the relation into several disk or partitions and now we can perform each of the partition on which we are performing the sorting operation. Now the first partition is being sorted the second partition is being sorted and it is the type of single query that is sorting out of an operation but we can perform it with parallelism that means dividing the partition into disks and now the sorted disks will be concatenated together to get the final sorted relation. So in this way we can divide and use this intra-query parallelism. Now another way to use this intra-query parallelism is by joining the relations. So when we are having a complex join, equi-join or natural join on a single query and if we can have the relations that stored into different parts on the processors then we can have the first query fetched on this processor 1 and then processor 2 and then join them together. Now most of the cases the intra-query parallelism goes on with the hand in hand of an operated tree. Now what is an operated tree that keeps track of all the operations that can be performed by a particular query. By maintaining an operated tree we can see the hierarchy in which or the order in which the query is performing all the operations. So the topmost operator on this query is becoming the root of the tree and it is said to be the outermost query operation and the leaf nodes are containing the innermost query operations. That means the AND or that we can have in the group by having clause or in the WHERE clause has been put in this last or the leaf nodes on the operated tree. Finally then the combine or the join as this inner nodes and root node is the selection on this. 
So now we can see that the projection and selection becomes the outermost operation on the operated tree, while we can have and this parent and leave node as the other operations. Now we can either have the operations go in parallel with each other and otherwise we can have the pipelining of this operation that one operation will be pipelined with other operation or we can have one operation's result that is an output of the operation as an input to another operation. Now this much parallelism is afforded by intra-query parallelism. Now what about the locks and the crunching of locks and release in intra-query parallelism? As it is in single query, now it can also happen and we can allow different parts or operations of an query to lock differently an item. Say suppose that all the queries are now running sequentially, so there is no way that the concurrent execution we need to control of two queries. Now we are more concerned with only one query and the part of the query. What happens when we are having two or more operations inside a in query? And it can be said that for a single query, these operations are subdivided into processors. Now each processor has the different part of the disk or the sectors on this database which is storing in this processor. So now when we want to lock and shared mode lock say for one operation of a query to a disk, and another operation is locking it in an exclusive mode lock. Say for instance that one query needs to read one data item or one attribute from a relation, say student. And now I need to update the instructor relation based on which, which student it is advising or instructing to. So now we can have the operation while selecting from the student relation as shared mode lock because it is just fetching the value from there. Will no use of updating that student relation. Now another part of the query based on the student relation or joined with the student relation, it is using that updation of the instructor or the department or the salary to it. So whatever is the updation, we need to produce an exclusive mode lock to this a query where we are having the second operation on a right one. So in this way different part of operation can be given different types of locks to provide the most coherency among this operation on this type of inter-query or intra-query operation. Now the intra-query parallelism can be supported by two types of operation. One is inter-operation parallelism, another is intra-operation parallelism. Now when we are having with intra-operation parallelism, then we can speed up the execution of a query by parallelizing the execution of different types of parallelism operation. Say for the join, simplex, projection, selection, and other Cartesian product and all. Now we can parallelize the execution of this query. Now for this inter-operation, we can speed up the execution of an intra-query parallelism by having executing this parallel operations together. So the main difference between two, one is executing the parallel operation, another is parallelizing the execution of the operation. So whether it belongs to any one operation, that the selection operation. Say for the selection operation is goes with two attributes in this relation. So now the two attributes can be selected parallelly from the same relation or say for the selection and projection that can be done in the same part of the relation and that can also be supported by this parallelism. Now both are the parts of this intra-query because the operations now we are talking about belongs to the operation tree of a particular query. Now this two form of parallelism of an intra-query parallelism that is one intra-operation and one inter-operation are complementary to each other. Now it depends on what architecture we are following. If it is the query of smaller operation then it is better to choose an inter-operation parallelism because now we can parallelly execute different operations. But if there are a larger number of operations in inside a query then we can choose choose the intra-query of operation where we can execute this parallel 
operations together inside a query. That means if the large number of operations are there, if there are say five or six operations, then we might try to execute these operations in parallel, which becomes the interoperation parallelism. Otherwise, if there are a smaller number of operations, say only selection and where clause. That means first we need to project and then select or select and project. In this way, we can parallelize these two executions of the operation. And also other than complementary, they can run both simultaneously for an inter-query. Say that we are having a large number of queries and each of these queries on this operation, they are having a large number of attributes associated to it. So we will need the inter-operation parallelism as well as the intra-operation parallelism. Now the parallelism that we are considering only the read-only concept because from this shared nothing disk to shared disk extent that we have explained in this inter-query parallelism can also be achieved in intra-query parallelism. How can we achieve this? We must first decide that what partition we are using. Even if we are using a hash on the round robin partitioning, we can achieve this in a small extent to the shared disk but it is better achieved with an range partitioning where we can have an range and from which the query goes to different range on the partition. Say for a query which is querying us for update the information on the salary which is 5% increase for the 50,000 range salary, 10% increase for the 1 lakh range salary. Now the operation itself consists of two parts and they go for this range partitioning. For the first range, it goes and update the value within 5% salary increase. For the second range, for the 10% salary increase. Now what we are doing, we are going for this intra-operation parallelism. Now from shared disk nothing, if there is no home processor that is associated with each disk DI, then we cannot move to the shared disk extent other than requesting the log for this home processor. As this intra-query is not happening with consequential queries and processing of it, then we can achieve only one query and power operation to it as the home processor will be executed and lock on this data item and then perform on this range. So now we are more concerned with this range, not on a particular data item. So we first need to put a lock on the attribute and then we can have it. But one problem associated with this type of problem that even if one attribute is being partitioned into range, when we need to put an exclusive mod lock, it is on the attribute, not the range. Now, if we put the attribute on a lock, then one part of the operation cannot go in parallel with other part of the operation because both of this would need to same attribute and execute it. Now, if we put this lock on a range-based partitioning on the range rather than on the attribute, then we can achieve this intra-operation parallelism inside an intra-query parallelism very easily. Now, the choice of algorithms for parallelism depends on the machine architecture. Whether we are having more processes to it or a single processor or a few processors to it will define that we will go for an inter-operation or intra-operation because intra-operation needs the operation to be divided into many processors. So if there is no possibility of a shared disk or the processor that we are having only a single one, then it is better to choose for an inter-operation query parallelism rather than an intra-operation intra-query parallelism. So that is all for an intra-query parallelism. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.